Hey everyone, my name is Jeremiah, and today on Hale Design Tech, I'm going to be building this. It's a new aluminum bed for my 3D printer. Stick around, I'll show you how it's made. Fifty-nine and three fourths. Fifty-nine. One, two, three. So right about here. Mark my line on the outside. So the inside of that mark is where they're gonna keep. I got 20 of these. Let's stack them up. I thought I'd center it up, but I didn't think I would be able to get the angles right. So I used the edge on that side over there to match up and have it line up nice. Um, if I tried to eyeball it and try to make the uneven all the way around, it probably wouldn't have turned out this good. One of the downsides for doing it with this method is these little gaps or cracks in the bed itself. They're minute, but they'll, that'll leave that mark on the bottom of whatever you print. Um, good thing is I don't really care about that. The bottom surface finish is something I don't really care about, and it won't mess up the print, I don't think. It won't mess up... <clears throat> and it actually might give a better first layer adhesion. I don't know. It's hard to get this thing in frame. Oh, this thing's heavy. I'm starting to sweat here a little bit. So, yeah, this is it. This is my replacement printing bed for my Autocrafter. It's a multi-process machine, so it's a printer and some other stuff. So this bed is meant to be removable when I want to do other processes like plasma cutting. So that's why it's nice and uh, lightweight aluminum. Um, I'm debating whether I want to put handles on this thing or just shimmy it out anyway. Uh, I might. We'll see. 
I've got a little play room on this thing to fit it to the bed. Um, I've got about a millimeter on the back side and a millimeter on one side to trim off to make it fit on my print printers over there. Uh, make it fit on, fit on the printer just fine. We'll give this thing a go and see how it does. It almost feels like a target at the shooting range. It's slightly too big to fit into the bed right now. Um, but doesn't that just look freaking sick? I love the way this looks. I'm going to need to do some trimming along this edge right here to make it all fit. And then along the back a little bit as well. Make it fit in here. Then it just slide down right in there. Okay, I got my trim dimensions. Just a little bit off, all the way pretty much around. But wherever the green Sharpie is, that's where you remove it. Let me do that real quick. struggle to get good shots of this because it's so huge. I have to uh, get some crazy camera angles. I got a few air bubbles underneath. So I'm heating the bed up and then I'll work those out with like, the, with like a credit card. So, as far as I can tell, there's only three. Not too bad. This thing looks awesome. So I came out this morning to find a big puddle on the ground. I'm like, it's leaking somewhere. And what I'm discovering is my rubber seal here. Anyway, um, it's hydro... It, uh, I forgot what the term is, but it likes water. So what it's doing is it's creating a siphon out from the water and to the ground. So the water is literally coming up over the edge of the tank and then going on the ground. That's annoying. So um, I'm going to have to find a better solution than this garage door seal, which I thought was hydrophobic, not hydro, whatever the other term is. Get this seal out of here. Hopefully, this will pull right off. Oh, yes, it does. Thanks, uh, undercoating I had on there. 